Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with our latest gameplay and deck tech video to show you. In this series, we highlight a random deck on MTG Arena, and it can range from a spicy homebrew to a tier 1 meta deck that is hot on ranked. And if you do enjoy these videos that we make, all I ask for you is to give a like on this video and subscribe to the channel as I would greatly appreciate your support. Now, if you like the deck we're playing today, I'll leave a link in the details below so you can give it a spin for yourself on Arena. Keep in mind that these videos will be pure gameplay, no commentary style, so you can enjoy the game. But if you do want to hear my deck tech analysis and thoughts, I'll leave that at the end of the gameplay. So without further ado, let's take the deck that you see right now and get started.
Dragon does not lose! And there you have it, everybody. That is our Dragon Force deck. And to be honest, it actually, oddly enough, worked. Usually I have a hard time working with dragons because they tend to be very expensive. But as you kind of see, we have a way of cheating many of our dragons into play. Honestly, this deck overall is something that I think even Sarkon himself would enjoy. What do you think, Sarkon? Do you think this deck was worthy of you? What know you of dragons? Well... If nothing else, that is a very Sarkon thing to say. But in any case, so this is also one of the few times I'm going to have to begrudgingly acknowledge that <sighs> alchemy actually did help us out here. And it really did make this deck 
much more easier to work with. So how does that work? Well, you probably have seen this cute little card before, Fearsome Whelp. This two mana alchemy dragon card has flying in haste. And it says at the beginning of your upkeep, each dragon card in your hand perpetually gains this spell cost one less to cast. So once this card comes out onto the battlefield, if it just sticks out there, that little whelp will eventually make a lot of our more expensive dragons cheaper and cheaper to the point where they're going to be super easy to cast. We could just flood the board with a ton of our winged friends. With that, we also need a way of churning through our deck to ensure that we can get to those big dragons very quickly. So we have a little bit of support still in that two drop slot with Corlesa Scale Singer. So this dragon bard allows us to look at the top card of our library and we may cast dragon spells from the top of our library. So even if we throw out our whole hand, this will just help us keep churning through the entire deck to get enough of our dragons into our hand to utilize them. But we still need a little bit more support because again, dragons are still expensive. So also in the two drop slot will be Scaled Nurturer. This dragon druid allows us to add one green mana. And when we spend that mana to cast a dragon creature spell, we gain two life. So this not only helps us ramp, but it'll also help us stabilize against more faster aggro decks. In the three drop slot, we have also a little bit more ramp with Swashbuckler Extraordinaire, which allows us to have a treasure token when it enters the battlefield. You probably are not going to use that secondary ability, which allows us to sacrifice a treasure to give something else double strike, but it can have be helpful in a pinch to close out a game. And of course, it couldn't be a dragon deck without Sarkin Fireblood. No sword can pierce my scales. This fantastic three drop legendary planeswalker allows us to either discard a card to draw a card or we can then add two mana in any color combination to then spend on a dragon spell that obviously means that you're going to be utilizing that ramp ability a ton to get to our bigger dragons very quickly and with that we're just going to go over real quickly all of our other major dragons it's just a giant hodgepodge the biggest dragon you want to try to get out as soon as possible is laza and dragon's legacy this dragon shaman allows us to deal some damage to any target equal to the spell's mana value so the keyword here is the spell's mana value even if it gets modified by fearsome whelp say we cast off say our sword coast serpent here this dragon is seven mana so that means this dragon will still do seven damage to our opponent which is a fantastic thing with lozon out we can then hopefully burn out our opponent's creatures and just close out the game very quickly or we could just go to face whatever is the easiest option for us to get to our victory but we still need a little bit of additional support so we have a hodgepodge of other dragons such as terror of the peaks which also kind of doubles up with lozon to help do some more burn damage to our opponent. We have Gold Span Dragon to take advantage of some of those treasure tokens maybe the Swashbuckler created to then ramp out our dragons even faster. Speaking of additional treasure support, we also have Young Red Dragon, which can create a treasure token on its adventure side. And of course, Atsushi, the Blazing Sky, would, and if it dies, we can create three more treasure tokens. So we have a little bit of a sub-theme with treasures, if you haven't already noticed, that really does help us create enough mana to get our big creatures out. And on the top end of the curve, we also have Lastless, Dragon Queen. The six mana dragon allows us to just keep making dragon creature tokens whenever we cast a non-token creature dragon spell so they just keep going off and just snowballs out of control but we have a little bit of extra support with dread linorm and that sword coast serpent the dread linorm allows us to then use its adventure ability to pump up one of our dragons and give it hex proof to get protection we only need one copy because again it's a really expensive spell so that's why we're sticking just one for now and then with the serpent itself, same thing, it also has adventure where we can return a creature to its owner's hand. So it can either be one of ours to bounce it to safety, or we can bounce away an opponent's creature to then get it out of the way, clear the blocker, and hopefully get some more damage in. However, there are going to be some moments where you're going to have a hard time trying to get specific dragons that you do need to get out in order to make the plays that you need to. So you also have Draconic Muralist. This four mana dragon bard allows us to search our library for a dragon card and put it into our hand, which would then we shuffle a library as long as of course the mirror list dies keep in mind that there might be moments where you're not going to have an opponent that wants to kill this so don't be afraid to take advantage of Lozan's ability where we can then burn out our creature say specifically that muralist and then force ourselves to then search our library for the very specific card that we need to get to our win and with that that leads us of course into our mana base the mana base here is going to be a little weird but trust me it actually works so we have Temple of the Dragon Queen, we have Unclaimed Territory, we have Secluded Courtyard, basically these are going to be our creature lands. We have Ancient Ziggurat, which is risky to play, but 
hear me out on this, it works more already because the main portion of the deck has almost all just creature spells, with the exception of Sarkon. But in order to ensure that we can get Sarkon out on time, we are going to lean into not only our Triumphs, but also we have four mountains to ensure that we have the right mana fix to get to mostly our red creatures, which also tend to be the ones that we need out the most critical of the deck. With that, let's go over to the sideboard. With that red mana, that does allow us to play a little bit more on the red side, so some of our non-creature spells, such as Tibble, prevents life gain against our opponents. We have some Dragon's Fire. Again, this is also for flavor purpose, but it actually is a pretty solid spot removal card if we need to. Another Dread Lenorm in the sideboard, some Mass Vandals. This card is alone helps us, of course, just get rid of those artifacts and enchantments that we just can't deal with. Some Tormod's Crypts. The only reason we're utilizing this is it's a free card, so even if we don't have the mana because we're maybe rocking Ancient Ziggurat, we can hopefully at least get it out and then just make sure we clear our opponent's graveyards if we need to in a pinch. And then finally, not only do we have one extra copy of Sword Core Serpent, but we have Morit of the Frost, this green-blue legendary snow creature shapeshifter, similar to the fact that Mass Vandal is a changeling. This is also a changeling. Basically, it just allows us to hopefully clone something that we have on the battlefield, even if it does make it legendary. It can also give it a little bit of extra pump and also just make sure we can double up maybe on some extra triggers with one of our other dragons that we have out there. But otherwise, that is the deck for you. And I really hope you guys take a chance to try this out. It is janky. It is a little awkward to play in some spots. But the one thing that you want to try to do to sequence this and get to more successful wins is know when to put out your whelp, know when to put out your scaled nurture or the scaled singer. These two drops are really critical to having the deck go off. So make sure you sequence these correctly. So just be mindful of that if you do want to play this deck. However, for a budget deck, this is actually pretty solid as is. So I don't have to recommend too many upgrades for you. If you feel a little unsure, I would still say at very least, and I've said this many times always, always update your mana base first before you go after the creatures otherwise my only other final thoughts that i have on the deck is i actually had a lot of fun doing this i'm not honestly a fan of dragon tribal personally but the way this deck was designed it just seemed like it just all clicked together there actually are a lot of fun synergies that i actually really enjoyed playing with this deck so if you are a fan of dragon decks if you just like playing giant creatures and just overwhelming your opponent with a variety of ways to get to victory whether it's burning them out with your dragons or just just smashing their faces however you want to do it give this deck a try and i'm sure you will not be disappointed let us fight that's all i have for you today thanks again for watching everyone and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life always be sure to burn bright later